This week we're talking about maps. So what is a map? At its most basic level, a map is a bird's eye view of the Earth's surface, usually neatly drawn, telling us where things are, places are, and how to get there. So let's walk through what a map kind of looks like or what we imagine it might be. So if we imagine the simplest idea of a map, it's going to be boxed, right? Something rectangular. The content of the map could be anything. Let's say it's the U.S. as a whole. Or maybe a fat cow, but that's the U.S. So we have our map content, right? What the map's about. And the map might have a variety of types of symbols on it. Right? Indicating some meaning, some kind of information that's on the map. And of course, in order to explain those symbols, you need what's called a legend. And the legend will contain explanations about what's on the map. In order to know how big the map is, we need, of course, some kind of a indication of scale right to tell us how big of an area is spanned by that map we know we want to know how it's oriented so we'll probably want some kind of indicator of orientation usually a north arrow but it could be maybe lines of longitude we probably need to have a title on the map Oops. Title uh, that tells us what the map's about. And then lastly, we want some kind of information about who made the map, maybe the date, source of information, maybe the projection information. Okay. And so there you go basic map elements that make up a map that, as we might imagine it. Of course, how we construct a map really depends on what the purpose is for and actually there are many types of maps that we can use that we can create so I want to go through a few types of maps that you might encounter so at the most basic level we have something like a reference map a general reference map that shows where things are uh, and this is mostly what we imagine a map looking like very two-dimensional but maps have very specific purposes a cadastral map is a very common type of map that you can find at any um, city hall. And cadastral maps are essentially intended to show you very precise and accurate information about where properties are in a neighborhood. It's used for tax assessment, for planning, for redevelopment, and they're very large scale maps. I mean, they're very zoomed in to show a lot of detail about very small areas. Topographic maps are another type of very popular map very important map, I should say, that show the shape of the land. They show elevation changes across the landscape. You can see in this upper left corner this topographic map, and it's kind of a classic uh, image, shades of green with a lot of brown squiggly lines all over it. And the brown squiggly lines are what are really important about a topographic map because those are the things that communicate the shape of the land, the changes in elevation, the slope. Uh, and it takes a little bit of training to read those, but Essentially, they work by connecting points of equal elevation. When you look at them from directly above, they look like, well, a lot of squiggly lines. But if you understand how they work, they actually can be interpreted to the point where you can actually see the um, shape of the land as it's being presented to you. A lot of modern maps, though, will supplement topographic maps in such a way that you can understand them a little bit more, so they're more intuitive. So they might apply hill shading to them so that you get a kind of a pseudo three-dimensional look to kind of emphasize what's going on inside the map. A bathymetric map is another type of topographic map except that the lines of here are showing depth below the water surface rather than elevation above sea level. Elevations usually means above sea level. 
Uh, so bathymetric is another type of topographic map, map but essentially for underwater. Um, maps that show elevation though have really evolved so we oftentimes will show uh, elevation differences in other ways. So for example this one uses hypsometric tinting. So instead of using the contour lines as we, as we saw with the topographic map we use these color-coded areas that kind of indicate um, how the elevation elevation changes in different areas. A completely different kind of map from a topographic map are a whole class of what we call thematic maps. And thematic maps typically will show one kind of theme and they typically tend to ignore the shape of the land itself. They're more interested in showing where and what kind of information is on the ground. So I want to go through a few types of these. So one type of important thematic map is a dot density map. And the dot density map essentially shows uh, some kind of phenomenon across an area where each dot represents some number of some phenomenon. So in this case, each dot represents population. Specifically, one dot represents 10,000 people. Right? So if you count up the number of dots in a given area, you can tell how many people are there. The point of this kind of map, though, is not necessarily to show you exactly where people are, but rather to give you the impression or the sense of where the concentrations are, where the density is, is highest and lowest. And that's the main purpose of that. Dot distribution is, is uh, important, but it's also important to understand how it's organized. In this case, we have a dot density map showing population in counties in California. What you'll notice is that the dots are kind of concentrated in certain counties because they represent the information that's only within that county. So for example, looking at Los Angeles County, which is this one right here, Los Angeles County um, has, say, 10 million people. And so it's going to have 10 million, right, divided by 10,000 will tell you how many dots are inside that county. Now the exact placement of the dots is not really important because the point is to represent the overall sense of density rather than to show you the actual location there, which can be misleading because it might give the impression that people in Los Angeles County are evenly distributed across the county when they're not. Actually, most of them are kind of close to the coast and sort of in the center of the county. The, actually, the eastern and northern parts of the county are fairly sparsely populated, but that's not the point, again, for this kind of map. So the map has a very specific purpose. A much more common type of map, and one that you'll be working with more extensively, is what's known as a choropleth map. Here, the information is organized by some kind of spatial map unit. In this particular instance, the unit are states, right? So you can see here we're looking at motor vehicle theft rate per state organized at a rate of a, per 100,000 population. But more fundamentally, the point is that the information is communicated to you by state. So you get a single number for each state. You know, across the whole country, you can see the variation in rates or concentrations across the state. Choroplets can take a lot of different forms. So in the previous example, we looked at quantitative data, but a choropleth map can also be used for qualitative data, or what we might also call categorical data. So in this case, we're looking for primary language groups across the continent of Africa. right? And so each area is delineated to show you what is the dominant language group there. Now, an important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at a choropleth map like this is that it's, a, it's an abstracted um, symbolization. So it can't be taken too literally. For example, looking at these sharp delineations between areas of the continent, um, we know that it's probably not likely that the language groups shift abruptly when you cross that line. Rather, some judgment had to be made about where to draw that line. Similarly, within this area, it's not to say that everybody speaks that one type of language, but rather that that's probably the predominant language. Which begs the question, of course, what does that mean, predominant? In any case, a choropleth map very quickly summarizes for you the distribution of these different categories of languages and their relative predominance. So it's a very effective way of communicating information and a very popular way of doing that. And again, you'll be working with this kind of map.